Don't make these mistakes. Take two and action. Everybody makes mistakes when they travel with an RV. If you haven't yet, you will sooner or later. And last year I did three videos, including some owner stories about mistakes people make with their tabs. But really what we found is they apply to everybody. Hi, I'm Jen Grover. And on this week's episode of Tab Talk, I'm back with more mistakes that people make the 2023 edition. Stay tuned. Let's jump into this week's video. You can make a lot of mistakes emptying your tanks, and the same is true of a cassette toilet. One mistake I heard recently that an owner made was when they were ready to dump their cassette toilet, they pressed the green button before the nozzle was over the hole. And of course, sewage started pouring out all over her foot. Lesson learned, don't push that green button too soon. One mistake owners make when they're packing up their camper is that they actually don't latch their windows all the way. It can be misleading because there's a little channel where the tab on the latches fits into, but that's just the first position. That first position allows for air to continue. To, it's very minimal, but it gives you the security of a latched window, but it's not all the way latched. It can cause problems with your window if you drive down the highway with it in that first position. You wanna make sure that it's all the way latched, which means the red latch is behind that channel. Let me show you. This window is in the first position. It's not closed all the way. These latches are all the way closed and not in the first position. You can see the tabs are behind the channel, not in the channel. Another thing you don't wanna do is head down the road with your fan on or your vent open. If you have a fantastic fan, you'll need to close it manually. If you have a Max Air fan, go ahead and close it. If you're just leaving a vent open, it can actually fly off while you're headed down the road. If you have a Max Air fan or a fantastic fan vent cover, that's a different story and you'll need to follow the instructions from those manufacturers. I will say, even with a Max Air fan, I do close it when I go down the road because just too much dust and dirt enters the camper if I leave it open while I'm driving, particularly in the West. Another thing you don't wanna do is forget to latch the cupboard doors. I've done that, everybody can do it, and then things fall out while you're driving. I even had a knife fall out and scratch the front of my cabinets. Not a great idea. Try to remember to latch the doors on the cupboard in the drawer if you have one. Another mistake owners make is to think they have a problem with their LP detector because it's chirping at them. There are a couple causes that can be behind that. The first is a low battery. It should be wired directly to your battery. That way, if there's a problem, you're alerted even if you've got the battery disconnect off. The other thing people don't think about is that their pet can actually cause that to go off or other items if they're in front of the LP detector. So if your LP detector is blocked and you hear chirping, unblock it and it should go away. Another mistake that owners make happens when they winterize. They'll run the antifreeze through the lines, except they don't go all the way when it comes to the toilet. They forget to flush the toilet until they see pink antifreeze coming into the toilet bowl. This could cause the water supply line for your toilet to break. And usually this isn't discovered until you take your camper out for the first time in the spring and you've got water leaking in your bathroom. Another thing that people forget to do is to monitor the weather. They might see that there are storms expected and go to bed or just not be aware at all of the weather. I strongly recommend a weather radio that can send off an alert whether you're asleep or not and also work whether your phone works or not. The phone app location doesn't update properly a lot of the times on apps that we all use to monitor the weather. And I've heard it over and over where people didn't get a weather alert. A weather radio is going to be your solution, especially if you're in an area that's close to a suburban area. And I mean, relatively close at pretty much anywhere in Ohio, Pennsylvania, the East, you should have coverage and many places in the West. I have been in the mountains where you're not in a coverage zone or where there's a gap in radar coverage and you don't get alerts. 
You have limited options in that scenario, but still monitor the weather. Keep your eyes open. Maybe don't go to bed if you know severe weather is a possibility or delay going to bed or talk to somebody who can call you if weather comes or come knock on your door. But whatever you do, you have to be self-reliant in these cases. So I strongly recommend a weather radio with an alarm to wake you up if there's severe weather on the way. I actually did a video with retired meteorologist Dr. David Titley last summer, who's a full-time Airstreamer for six months of the year, was very high up in the Navy and oversaw National Hurricane Center operations. So I'm going to put a link to that video because it's well worth your time if you haven't watched it yet. But above all, don't forget to monitor the weather. You don't want to be trapped in your camper if severe weather strikes. Sometimes I'll hear from campers who've made the mistake of taking their maiden voyage with their camper and bringing their pets before they've had a chance to test their pet's reaction to the camper. A lot of animals are not comfortable with a camper. It's a different type of space and they need to be oriented and socialized to the camper. What can happen is they'll go through the screens on your windows or even through your screen door. Those can be sort of expensive things to repair and your pet may either escape or become injured. So make sure that you properly acclimate your pet to the camper before you take your maiden voyage. I actually have a video about acclimating your pets and traveling with your pets. I'll put the link to that video right here above my head. Every once in a while, somebody will post in one of the groups and their problem is they've got bugs everywhere and they're really frustrated. I've learned that most of the time when I have bugs in the camper, it's the result of leaving the door open and having the lights on. An easy way to avoid a bug infestation at bedtime is to make sure all the lights are off in your camper until you're inside and have closed the door for the last time that evening. I also make sure that the screens and blackout shades are tight because if there's a gap at all, then bugs are gonna come in through those little gaps. A common mistake for new owners is to turn on their pump and get frustrated when they don't get any water. They think they've got a broken pump or that the Nautilus system doesn't work. But a lot of times the truth is the mistake they've made is to leave the Nautilus on the wrong settings. Maybe they've left it on tank fill or maybe city water connection, but if you don't have it on the dry camp mode, you won't have any water when you turn on your pump and you're dry camping. Well, those 10 mistakes are pretty common. It's not the first time I've heard most of them. So if you've made them, don't feel bad, you're not alone. And if you haven't made them, hopefully they'll stick in your head and you'll avoid making them. Or when you do make them, they'll seem familiar and you'll know how to remedy the situation. I hope this video was helpful for you. If it was, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to my videos to be notified when I post additional content. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.